Welcome to section five of Science of the Pole Shift. Who knows about the pole shift and how are they preparing? Do any of you have friends or family who suddenly felt the need to plant a garden or started keeping chickens in the last few years or who suddenly decided to move inland somewhere mountainous or wooded? You know, especially with the pandemic this year, it's 2020 when I'm making this, a lot more people are interested in homesteading. But I wrote this back in 2017. Even if people aren't aware of the Nibiru system specifically, the Earth is showing us through all these signs that a pole shift is coming. And I believe it registers with some people on a subconscious level, leading them to start prepping. Often, pop culture is a reflection of what we, as a society, are worrying about most. In recent years, we have been inundated with media depicting survival after the collapse of modern civilization. Are we being warned? Or is this another expression of our collective subconscious showing angst over the future? On the screen are the titles of all these post-apocalyptic movies or movies that reference past pole shifts, like Noah or uh, Exodus. Even though we, the common people, are kept in the dark about Nibiru, there is clear evidence that those in power, those people in power right now, they know all about it. After Nibiru arrived in our solar system in 2003, the United Nations and several nonprofit groups got together to fund the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, a cold storage depository of seeds for millions of varieties of crops located on an Arctic island near Norway. The first stone was laid in June of 2006, and the seed vault opened for business in February of 2008. Here's a headline from The Guardian. The Doomsday Vault. They even call it the Doomsday Vault. The Doomsday Vault. The seeds that could save a post-apocalyptic world. The vault, if you read about it at its own website, says that it's positioned 430 feet above sea level to avoid flooding from sea level rise. That's on their own website. But we know they should have built it higher, huh? Yeah, we do. The Chinese government kicked its Ghost Cities program into high gear in 2005, building several massive empty cities in its interior. These cities aren't just tract home developments like you'd find in the U.S. They are complete self-contained cities with sewage, freeways, schools, hospitals, government buildings, and parks. Here are six of the largest Chinese ghost cities. I will not try to pronounce them. They were built inland away from the coasts on higher plateaus of land, as this map shows, on stable portions of the tectonic plate. The Chinese government knows what's up. The goal is to have a place to move the elites and government workers once Nibiru becomes visible. Right now, China's largest cities are all on the coast, where flooding will wipe them out. Cities like Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Shanghai, and Shuzhou. Even the capital city of Beijing is only 143 feet above sea level. Bye-bye, Beijing. Melting ice caps alone will flood Beijing. To preserve their power base and their culture, the Chinese government is planning ahead. Here is a map of the largest ghost cities, and here is a flood map of a 200-foot sea level rise. Now here is a 600-foot sea level rise. You can see which ghost cities are safe from, fl safe from flooding. Not all of them are. Some of them are still built where they might get flooded. I don't know why that is. How is Russia preparing? Vladimir Putin knows all about Nibiru and the pole shift. Russia is a vast country with enormous natural resources. However, most Russians live in the West, which is low-lying land. Let's look at a 600-foot flood map of Russia. Oh my. All the big capitals are going underwater. Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Volograd. But look at Russia's far east. It does quite well being at a higher elevation and full of fertile land. So Russia has been taking steps to relo relocate its government to the Far East and to settle more people out there in order to preserve their power base and culture. Here's some headlines. Medvedev instructed to send offices of major state companies to the Far East, a Russian news site tells us from 2014. Russia looks to populate its Far East. Wimps need not apply, says the New York Times in 2016. And from the Moscow Times in February of 2017, Russian government starts free land giveaway in countries far east. So, like China, the Russian government has a plan to save its power base and culture, this time by pushing people and bureaucratic infrastructure to the Russian far east. The Egyptian culture survived the last pole shift, and their current government is determined to survive this one as well. Here's a map of Cairo. 
and as we speak, the capital city of Cairo is being relocated to the hills several miles east. I wonder why they chose this particular spot, he asked sarcastically. Let's look at our 600-foot flood map. So you see on this picture the location of the new capital off to the east, and 600-foot flood map. Oh, look at that. There's just a small spur of land that stays above water during the flooding, which will happen after this next pole shift. And they, they, they know that they, they, their elites know everything I know and that you now know. So that's what they're doing. And from March 2015, BBC News, Egypt unveils plan to build new capital east of Cairo. From October 2016, Egypt is getting a new capital, courtesy of China, with help from the, uh, Chinese investment. And from September 2017, China to invest $11.2 in Egypt's new capital. New Zealand has got to be one of the most attractive places to ride out a pole shift. It has a population that is small, well-educated, and English-speaking. It has fertile land full of farms and food. It sits on a tectonic plate that rises up above the waves and won't drown like Europe. Images from the 9.0 earthquake of 2016, that's a huge earthquake, show how new land was actually pushed above the water. So you see there's evidence how even in a big earthquake it goes up not down. So who cares about New Zealand? Apocalypse Island tech billionaires are building bolt holes in New Zealand because they now fear social collapse or nuclear war. So what do they know that we don't? Asks the Daily Mail in February of 2017. You see, the billionaires know about the coming pole shift through their contacts in government and other elites. And now you know what the billionaires know. You're welcome. Another article, the super rich are preparing for the end of the world, buying houses in New Zealand. Billionaire Peter Thiel just secured property and citizenship there, says CNBC News. From the National, super rich preppers buying up in New Zealand in case of U.S. collapse. William, Kate, and Prince George arrive in New Zealand for a 10-day royal tour says the headline, there have long been rumors that the royal family plans to ride out the pole shift in New Zealand where it's safest. Not just New Zealand, but Colorado, Kansas, Indiana, Switzerland, Germany, and South Africa are seeing an explosion of construction on luxury bunkers right now. Hmm. As the mirror says, luxury doomsday bunkers in high demand as a wealthy elite prepare for nuclear apocalypse after Donald Trump's victory. Okay, th both of those are nonsense, right? That's not what they're preparing for. Another headline from Vice, the man who builds luxury bomb shelters for paranoid one percenters. And from Business Insider, this 15-story underground doomsday shelter was built from an old Atlas missile silo in the Midwest. And finally, for the Americans in the audience, how is the United States government preparing? Well, the U.S. government has been building out enormous underground infrastructure, known as deep underground military bases, for many years. A lot of people have heard of these. In fact, I got a buddy who's got a brother, who's got a friend, who's a trucker in the Midwest, and he took video of a recent delivery he did in one of these massive underground bases in Kansas, where the ceiling is just carved out stone and there's big, these big pillars of stone every hundred feet or so and it just goes and goes and goes and goes for miles. It was quite impressive. So these deep underground military bases are generally built in higher stable regions of the country. This map pinpoints the biggest underground bases that we know about. Notice how little development there is on the east coast which is expected to be underwater, right? It's all very low elevation out there. Here's our 600 foot flood map <laughs> that shows what happens to the East Coast, mostly underwater. A facility underneath the Denver airport has been designated the new Western White House for continuity of government. A lot of conspiracy theories about what's under the Denver White House, but there, there is a large facility down there. It's called COG, C-O-G, continuity of government. From the sun, doomsday secret. Is there a secret bunker hidden beneath a U.S. airport built to save government chiefs from the apocalypse? Yeah, you bet there is. So for a humble American such as I, um, is this all the U.S. is doing? <laughs> building these underground bases? Because it's not building underground bases for us, for the common man, for the little guy. Those are for the elites and the establishment apparatchiks and, and political cronies and stuff. Unlike China and Russia, 
um, the U.S. is just kind of, it seems to be that they're just kind of looking out for the elites, and that's it.